this is a video about what finance is. And finance can be a verb or a noun. And as a verb, finance means to raise or provide funds or capital uh, for an activity or to furnish with necessary funds or to sell something on credit. Whereas as a noun, uh, finance, um, it, it refers to money or other liquid resources of a government, business group, or an individual, a, a system that includes the circulation of money, granting credit, making investments, and the provision of banking facilities. Um, it, it, is, it sounds a lot sophisticated, but it really is not. It is the, uh, the actual science or the study of the management of funds, of money and to obtaining of funds and, and or capital. So there are different fields of finance and um, we go through user-based fields and then structural fields. And with respect to the user-based, you're talking about personal finance, which in and, in and of itself, there's investing and borrowing and the similar subcategories exist for corporate finance, public finance and, and, and non-profit. Um, with respect to the structural fields of finance, you're talking about investments, financial markets, financial institutions, and insurance. And they are strictly um, integrated, yes, but they are actually different fields of finance. And it requires people to have extensive knowledge in it in each of these fields, but uh, most people will be experts in uh, either single or a, a few fields of finance altogether. Um, with respect to personal finance, there's the investing side and then there's the borrowing side. And obviously uh, people can have short-term, interim term or a long-term uh, investment horizons, both for investing and borrowing. And with respect to short-term, now you're talking about uh, stocks, bonds, ETFs, mutual funds, even though this also can be used for long-term investing. Uh, in, in term, term, precious metals, collectibles, perhaps, but longer term, which is a lot more common for pretty much everybody, uh, you're looking at retirement accounts and you know buying a house uh, or starting a new business. Um, and, and similarly with borrowing, you're looking at short-term uh, borrowing needs based on credit cards or consumer loans, but then you know you go into interim term where you finance a car or you finance a, a, a new business startup or perhaps finance your education through short term or, or an interim term borrowing. And with respect to the long term, again, you're talking about real estate financing through a mortgage or perhaps an education uh, where you borrow to go through college or, or a higher education. With respect to the corporate finance, very similar to the personal finance, you have investing and borrowing for short term, interim term, and a long term. And uh, for the short term, you're looking at inventory, um, you know, companies buying stocks and bonds and ETFs of other companies, um, having working capital or partnerships or actual production for the interim term. And very similar to personal finance, in the long term, you're looking at uh, real estate, joint ventures. Uh, investing in the future through research, um, acquisitions, mergers, um, they all go into these long-term planning on the corporate finance side. And with respect to borrowing, um, obviously, you, you know, for corp corporations, it's it just the maturity on the bonds and the notes that they issue or the loans that they take out. I have seen as short as few months and I have seen as long as uh, 30, 40 years of bonds um, currently trading for, for corp corporations. And, um, and the public finance, and now this is, again, overlooked a lot of the times by finance majors, finance students, but there's actually a great deal of finance that goes through public finance. So there's the government finance, and especially in the U.S., you have, you know, the city governments, the state, the federal, and then you have agencies, and all of them go through the finance. I mean, I cannot even imagine what type of finance that goes through, uh, you know, agencies like FEMA. Um, or, you know, the small business administration. And, um, but a lot, you know, a lot of the times our students seem to overlook uh, what it means to have, um, or to, to have a public finance. Um, 
We also have non-profit or not-for-profit institutions that go into public finance. So for instance, uh, before I started working for Loyola, I didn't even realize that non-profit or not-for-profit institutions had to file uh, what's called an IRS 990 form, which is a required form for non-profit institutions. And they are actually considered part of public. And, um, and there's significant finance uh, as a field that goes through uh, these institutions. Um, there are different, obviously, securities uh, that make up the domain of investments, and these include stocks, bonds, commodities, currencies, ETFs, mutual funds, derivatives, um, you know, like options and futures and forwards and exotics and real estate, um, and then some others that we don't usually consider to be uh, within the investment domain, but they are. You, know, you have business partnerships. Uh, private investment, if you will, um, angel investors, um, you know, entrepreneurship, um, financing, um, you know, things like that. And then uh, people may or may not realize, but, you know, when you buy a collectible item, um, even for, say, um, you know, comics and stuff like that, I mean, it actually goes through a, a significant investment process. And um, I have seen uh, some you know, collectibles that I couldn't even believe that they were being sold for millions of dollars. And uh, very similarly, charity uh, is, is often overlooked, but there is a, um, you know, finance field or investments field that actually uh, goes through the, uh, the process of charity. And, um, and it actually can be a, a significant uh, involvement of finance. Um, financial markets um, includes exchanges like New York Stock Exchange or NASDAQ or Philadelphia, or it could include companies who are wholesale and, and that provide markets for other smaller brokerage companies or smaller investors. And then there could be private markets or cooperatives. And, um, but private markets and cooperatives seem to be a little bit more common for commodity trading or um, you know, other types of investments other than like stocks or bonds or ETFs, but uh, cooperatives, for instance, can be more for agriculture, um, perhaps livestock. Um, and in Louisiana, there are a, a few for livestock, for instance. Um, and then financial institutions. Now, these include uh, banks, uh, commercial banks, investment banks. Um, you, you're looking at ex exit banks as in export import banks. Um, not so common, but this also includes uh, government banks. Uh, I don't think that we have a government bank in the U.S., but um, and then the central banks, obviously. In the U.S., we have the Federal Reserve as a central bank, and many other countries, they just have um, less of a federal system, but they have a single central bank. And recently, European Union kind of integrated their uh, central bank system into what is very similar to the U.S., Federal Reserve System. Uh, financial in institutions further include uh, brokerage companies that help us trade most of the securities like stocks, bonds, ETFs, and whatnot. And then we have fund management companies um, that, that manage and make it available for investors to trade, uh, such as ETFs and mutual funds. And then everybody's uh, very popular hedge funds uh, you know, these all are part of our financial institutions domain. And then, again, we have uh, a, a part of finance that people usually overlook as uh, a, a viable financial institution with respect to looking for jobs or uh, investing in them or, or um, actually, um, you know, as, as part of the financial institutions domain. And those are insurance companies. Uh, insurance is a subfield of finance. And... Um, there's also significant math component to it through actuaries, uh, but you know most insurance companies are not just finance companies themselves, but they also have significant funds and they become investors. And uh, insurance companies' investments are highly regulated, and um, and they are part of the financial institutions domain. And then there are exchanges, like I said, uh, New York Stock Exchange, Nasdaq, Philadelphia, and 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 whatnot. So. With respect to insurance, um, we have several different types of insurance. I only wanted to uh, provide some most common ones, uh, like a personal insurance, uh, perhaps like an umbrella insurance, perhaps um, uh, 
a corporation uh, taking out an insurance for business interruption or a liability insurance for a car, liability insurance for your homeowner's insurance, health insurance, dental insurance, uh, life insurance, term life, accumulating life, and then retirement accounts that uh, may not be perhaps considered to be an insurance product, but they may include annuities, they may include uh, you know, life insurance uh, along with them. So you know, it, it may not be just a 401k where you have your portfolio, but you, you might actually attach a, a life insurance in the case of death, or um, you may include um, other products that, that make them uh, re retirement products or insurance products. Um, most finance um, fields that serve to public require a license. For instance, banking is a license. Um, you know, a person can, can create any company that they want, but if you want to be a bank, you need a license to bank. Um, so as a corporation, you know, anybody can own a corporation, but if you want to start uh, a bank, you need a banking license. Um, also for individuals who want to do advising or fund management, then you need, um, you know, certificates like the CFP or, or charters like the CFA. Um, and you may need to take certain tests. Um, and I wanted to quote just a few here um, that allows you to do institutional um, trades or institutional uh, advising. Um, and obviously to trade, uh, to be a broker or a dealer, you may need a license depending on the state that you're in, depending on the state that you're operating in. And, um, and insurance, in most states, you actually need a license to, uh, to write or underwrite an insurance. And then again, with the real estate, uh, when you're financing it or when you're actually intermediating a sale, you may need a license to finance or broker the deal. Um, so all in all, finance is actually a, a huge uh, field and, um, you know, everybody has this, uh, you know, perhaps not everybody, but most people have this tendency to reduce the finance into uh, stocks and stock exchanges and, and, and portfolios and portfolio management. But there's just so much to it. it it's, it's really not limited to just, you know, which stock we buy. Uh, but, and everybody seems to overlook the fact that whether you like it or not, um, you know, everybody will have some sort of a retirement account. Uh, where you are trying to accumulate for your retirement. And, um, and the good decisions that you make uh, will make it so that you have more money when you retire, or perhaps you could retire early. And the bad decisions that you make uh, may end up costing you many more years to work or to end up with funds uh, that are not sufficient for your retirement. And therefore, um, I do believe that you know, the training uh, of finance is, is significant for everybody. Uh, not just for finance majors, but for every common person, um, because you know you're buying a house, which is finance. You're having a retirement account, which is finance. You're, you're financing a, a, a car, or you have a credit card. They're all finance. Um, and and you know this this training, this education in finance, the financial literacy or investment literacy, are are incredibly important for everybody, not just finance majors. So thank you for watching, and um, let me know if you have any questions. And um, thank you.